Hello. Um, my name is Michael Sheldon. I'm a research assistant at the DFR lab. And I'm Lukas Androkaitis. I'm a research associate at the DFR lab. So today we're going to talk about we weapons recognition um, and, um, and, and munitions recognition. So what is munitions recognition or, or weapons identification? Um, at its core, it's taking imagery or f video footage of, um, of a certain type of arm and determining what it is um, at its core. So where this becomes useful is when, when you know what a certain type of missile or firearm or tank is, then you can often determine where it comes from, who uses it, um, approximately when it was made, which is a very important detail in some current conflicts. Um, and so there's just a ton of great case studies in the open source community right now um, where people have been using this methodology to, uh, to make their cases. It is a very useful method. And actually, in the FR lab, we used it extensively for um, recognition of various banned uh, weapons and munitions, uh, whether it be cluster bombs, uh, chemical weapons. Um, if you would like to read more, uh, you have the Breaking Gouda uh, report on your tables, which, uh, in which you can find a lot of examples of, of such methods. Yep. So, so for this table game, we've, um, or for this interactive session, we've selected a, um, an interesting case study from earlier this year, which, um, if you recall, there was an incident between Pakistan and India where India launched an airstrike onto Pakistani territory. And shortly after, in response, Pakistan launched a retaliatory strike, wherein there was an aerial um, combat exchange, um, and one Indian fighter jet was shot down, a, specifically a MiG-21 Bison. And so that, that fact is not disputed by either side, but where the, dis the dispute comes in, um, and which led to a heavily contested um, information environment, is that India claimed that before this fighter jet that you see up here was shot down, um, it managed to shoot down a Pakistani F-16. Um, and Pakistan claims that it shot down two MiG-21s. Um, in this case, we're really just going to um, look at India's claim, because this is, that's what we can gather the most from just look, looking at this imagery right here. Um, and there's a, couple, there's a couple of things we can look at um, in this imagery. It might look very mangled, but there's actually a lot of key details that are, will be visible um, and useful. And the method methodology is quite simple. Uh, you take the image you find, uh, from the, in this case, from the crash site, and you take images of the weaponry that you think it might be it, and you look for similarities and clues, uh, and you try to match them. So whether it will be an image uh, from internet or a, yeah, better even a blueprint, and then you try to find as many, uh, as many details to confirm your claims. Yes, and so because the claim was that this fighter jet managed to shoot up off a single um, R-71 missile, what we want to know is, does it still have all, all its missiles um, at the crash site? Because if it does, then clearly it didn't shoot off a missile. Um, but if one is missing, then there's a slight chance that it could have shot down a uh, Pak Pakistani F-16. So if you all open your um, on envelopes, then we'll um, get started to explaining how this um, table game works. OK. So in your folders are three sets of stapled papers and five individual um, pieces of paper or pictures. The stapled paper, the stapled picture, or bundles, if you will, are, um, are reference images for each individual mi missile that you have to identify. Um, one is an R-73 infrared um, air-to-air missile. Another is an RVV-AE uh, actively homing um, air-to-air missile uh, radar guided. And the last is an AIM-120C um, actively homing radar guided um, missile produced in the United States. So that would be a missile that the F-16 would have been using. Um, 
So you'll be using these reference images to determine what, what each of these individual images came from. So each of these image, images will either be an R73, an RVV-AE, or an AIM120C. Is that clear? OK. So once everybody has their papers out, then I think we'll, um, we'll get started. And we're going to do, do this on a on case-by-case basis. So let's, if you all take number one, and then, um, then we'll start um, voting on the app. So get, get your phones out. We're going to vote on the app about this. OK. First case study. This is a seeker head. Um, so if you all look at image one, you have to look at this image and vote on the app which, um, which missile you think this comes from, this fragment here. So time starts now. And you have two and a half minutes. And by the, by the time is up, please enter the correct answer on the apps, and then we'll see it live uh, on the screens. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll explain that up there. OK, so um, when you vote on the app, option one is R73, option two is RVV-AE, option three is AIM120C. If you forget, you yep. can look at the, um, at the screens, and they'll have that information. Is everything clear for you guys? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All clear? It should be numbered, yeah. Should, should be, be this one, yes. I'm sorry, there seems to be, um, we, I realize now that we made a slight mistake. We scrambled or we restructured the decks afterwards, so the image you actually have to look at is number two, not number one. I apologize for that. Um, Am I speaking? Hmm? Am I speaking? I, I believe so. Time's up. Time's up. Oh. Okay. Time's up. Um, let's see what you answered. All right, overwhelmingly correct. This, this is indeed the uh, seeker head from an R-73 uh, infrared um, air-to-air missile. So, um, and we can see that here. Um, this is clearly the, the forward section um, that we're looking at right here. So moving on to, uh, to the next one. And I think it'll just be easier if you look up and, and see what, what image it is we're, we're uh, comparing. Number two. Uh, take a look and let the time begin. Do you want me to? What to look at? You have to look for small details. Um, yeah. but yes. So. In case anyone needs a, uh, a little, one of these three, yes. Okay. In case anyone needs a little bit of a hint, okay. um, it's a, the top part of the wreckage that you're looking at. You can see it's kind of rounded. That is the missile. 
and it's still attached to um, the launch unit, so the rails that it, that it fires off of. So you want to look at how the different missiles look when they're attached to the aircraft, because you're seeing part of the missile and part of the aircraft in this. The missile is the, the top bit. This is the launch unit, so it's upside down. Uh -oh. So far, so good. Yeah. This is the tips, right? This is actually the launch unit, and the so missile is the, the the rod up. This is the bit of the missile. So basically, this is the plane upside down. This is the, the bottom of the wing. This is the type of image you want to look at. All good? So again, when you look through reference images here, so you're going to want to look for reference <laughs> images that include the aircraft um, while the missile is attached to the aircraft, because um, that's really going to be the key for this identification. OK. We have 20 seconds left of voting, if you haven't voted yet. Select an answer, and um, we'll see what you got. Okay, voting's up. Let's see. Um, let's see the results. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. That's a bit rough. Um, Actually, uh, <laughs> what does it say? Twelve point. Three? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the correct answer was R73. Yeah, so some of you are, are very, very good digital Sherlocks. This was a tough one, and admittedly, this is the most difficult one. Um, a quick comparison you can see the, the real guy or the real sort of identifying factor here was the hinges on the missile launch unit um, and the cylindrical shape that it had that was. Um, unique to this type of um, missile launch unit. The next one? Yep. OK, next one. Here we have the, um, the main frame of a missile. Um, and let's start the voting. Um, it's made for export. Yeah. So if it's if it's made for export, then they'll often change the markings. Yeah. We're getting better. Maybe we'll see. We'll see the answers. They, they should work for the dear farmer. <laughs> OK, we're, um, <coughs> we're, run we're running a little bit short on time. So if I think um, let's cut it short by 30 seconds. Um, so when there, when there are 15 seconds left, we, we end voting.
So everybody put in their votes. All right, let's see the results. Yeah. Overwhelmingly correct. It was the RVV dash AE. Good job. Yep. Um, if you would take a look, ma mainly the markings on the on the missile itself revealed which which part of it is it, it is. Uh, the little circles and the little behind the grass, you can see the little two stripes as well. That's right. Next candidate, a bit more muddy, but you know, still still the body of a missile. Um, let's start the clock. Actually, I think that after us, we have a coffee break, so we don't really have to cut it. All right, cool. Sorry. No worries. Yeah, it's you, think think it's fun? Huh? you think it's fun? I don't think so. OK, that's good. That's interactive. Yeah, that's true. Sure. These are 20 millimeter casings, I believe. Or 23. Yeah, so about 23 millimeters, I believe. Sorry. Hmm? To me? Oh, thank you. You got it? I see, I see most of the teams are done. Yeah, it would seem that way. Um, yeah, just if you haven't put in your vote yet, um, put in your votes, and then we'll see the results shortly. Okay, let's see the votes or the answers. Whoa, that was hotly contested. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was in an RVV AE. Again, you can see by the markings, um, there's a slight protrusion mm. um, yeah. in, um, at the bottom of the missile. In, in both yeah. images. One, one important mar remark is that sometimes the images you find on the internet are from um, weapons uh, sales, uh, sales uh, events. So they have slightly different markings, all, or they, they might be in slightly different colors. But the main elements have to be the same. Correct. OK, next, next one is a, a bit tough, but hopefully you'll get it. Um, let's see it. Can you guess it? <laughs> Not, not always, you don't always have to be a digital Sherlock to, to do this kind of stuff. Sometimes it's just no shit Sherlock, um, as in this case. But there is additional information that we can glean from this, such as lot numbers, um, to see who it was sold to originally, or at least a, a batch of countries that it was sold to originally, um, and, and other information about you know, when the contract was and stuff like that, especially true for Western countries. Um, I don't think we have to vote on this. <laughs> this is power through that. Yeah, as you can see, it's at towards the rear of the missile. So um, yeah, using this, we weren't able to identify two R73s. Both or all the identified parts could have technically come from the same missile, 
but um, in the subsequent press release by the Pakistani government, they showed the fragments or the remains of two R-73 missiles, and so likely it wasn't um, actually fired. Yeah, and this is, again, one of, uh, one of the key methods how to build up uh, open source evidence when it comes to hard security questions when we're building up a case for uh, crimes against humanity in various conflict zones. So I hope it wasn't, wasn't too hard nor too easy, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you.